Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with Jay Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Let's continue to look at recording journal entries. The question is taken from the Accounting Unit 1 2018 past paper, and that is question 1C. We begin by looking at the question, and the question reads, Stevens Limited had the following equities and liabilities as at 31st of December 2016. Ordinary shares with a par value of 50 cents and the value of the ordinary share capital is $100,000. Share premium at a value of $20,000. Retain earnings that is $325,000. 8% debenture, $200,000. Redeemable 5%, $1 preference shares and that is at $50,000 and 9% debenture, that value is $80,000. The following transactions occurred during 2017 and you are asked to record the journal entries for the year 2017 for Stevens Limited. So we're going to record those transactions in the journal for Stevens Limited. And we're going to begin by looking at the first transaction. And that first transaction took place on January 3rd. And there's a bonus issue of share of 144 for every four share held. So... In order for us to do that, we have to take into account the ordinary share capital, and that is $100,000. Now, we're given the power value. We're not given the amount of shares. But what we have available is the value of the ordinary share capital. So we're going to proceed to look at the journal entries for that first transaction. And uh, just a reminder before we go any further, the bonus issue is a gift of shares to current shareholders usually given to them in place of cash dividend. We're now going to look at the formula in calculating bonus issue. Now, in terms of the formula, it is a number of shares multiplied by bonus rate, multiplied by the par value. So if you're given the par value and the number of shares, then you would use this formula. But because we're given just the par value and the value of the ordinary shares, we're going to proceed to use this simple formula, which is the share capital multiplied by the bonus rate. Because at the end of the day, if you use the first one, what we would have done is to divide the value of the share capital by the par value, and that will give us the number of shares that were issued. But having calculated that, we would have to come back to multiply what we get by the par value, having calculated the bonus in order to get the value for the bonus. So instead of going through all of that, we're going to simply multiply the share capital by the bonus rate. And that is 100,000 multiplied by a quarter, because it is one for every four, what we could have done is simply divide the 100,000 by four, and that gives us 25,000. So to record that in our journal, it is January 3rd, account to be debited is retained earnings, and the value that the retained earnings will decrease by is $25,000. And the account to be credited there is ordinary share capital, and that is 25,000. Now, our narrative is to record a bonus issue of one for every four share held. And we're going to move into the next transaction. And that is uh, April 1st, issued 20,000 ordinary shares of 50 cent par for $1.50. So right here, we are seeing that we have issued the 20,000 ordinary shares above the par. What do I mean by above the par? Our par value is 50 cents. However, 
it was issued for $1.50. So we're seeing that we have issued it for a dollar more than the par. That excess will be recorded as share premium, also known as paid in capital. So we're going to proceed to make our journal entry. And uh, to do that, first thing we need to pick up the date, and that is April 1st. Our account to be debited there is cash because we have sold the, the share. So therefore, we would receive cash in return. So there's an increase in the assets of cash. And in terms of our calculation, we sold 20,000 shares at a value of $1.50 per share. All of that goes to the cash account. And that value is $30,000. Now, in terms of the ordinary share capital, we're seeing that there is an increase and the increased value is based on the number of shares sold, so that would be 20,000, multiplied by the par value. And that gives us a value of $10,000. So remember, once it is at par, you have to account for the number of shares sold at the par value. Okay, and in this case, it was 20,000 shares that were sold multiplied by the 50 cents, which would be the par value, and that give us $10,000. And because the shares were sold above par, we have what is called share premium, and our share premium account is credited. How do we calculate the share premium? There are two ways to look at this. The first way is where you multiply the number of shares sold by the excess value that it was distributed for, sold for. So it was sold for a dollar more than the par value. So it is 20,000 multiplied by the $1. And that will give us a share premium. Another way to calculate this is to pick up the cash value, which is 30,000, subtract the share capital from that, which is 10,000. And we will get the share premium value of $20,000. And our narrative is simply ordinary shares issued at $1.50 per share. We're now going to move into our next transaction. And uh, that is September 30th. And it reads, redeemed 50,000 preference shares at par with a new issue of 100,000 ordinary shares at par of 50 cents. So what we're seeing is that the business use the issue of 100,000 ordinary shares at 50 cent par to redeem the preference share. So that is in exchange of the preference shares that they have redeemed. So we're now going to proceed to the journal to show our recording. So that is September 30th. Account to be debited is a preference share because once you redeem the preference shares, once you redeem the shares, that's going to reduce it. So we're debiting preference shares and the value that we're debiting is 50,000 because it did indicate that we redeem the preference shares for $50,000. And our account to be credited because there was an issue of the ordinary share capital in order to redeem the preference shares, we're going to credit ordinary shares. And in terms of the value that we're crediting, it is 100,000 because we have issued 100,000 shares at par, which is 50 cents, and that gives us $50,000. And our narrative is preference shares redeemed with ordinary shares. And we're going to move into the next transaction, which is our last transaction. And that is November 28th. And uh, this transaction reads, redeemed the total 9% debenture at par. Now, if you look at the question, the details given in terms of the balances, you would notice that for the debenture, there are two sets of debenture. For the one that we are redeeming, is the 9% debenture and the value of that is 80,000. This means that we are repaying that long-term liability. So in terms of doing that, we're gonna to proceed to the journal to show the reduction in that. So it is 
November 28th, account to be debited 9% debentures. And we're debiting because there's a reduction in that long-term liability. And the value that we redeem is $80,000. And we are going to show the account to be credited, which is cash. And it is reflecting that there is a reduction in the asset of cash of $80,000 that was used to redeem the 9% debentures. And our narrative is redemption of debentures. And this basically takes us to the end of the lesson where we have worked out 2018 accounting unit one past paper number one C. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.